Hey, Diane here, and uh, I'm inviting you along on my journey with my new Baby Lock Lyric sewing machine. Um, for years and years and years, I've probably not spent more than a couple $400 on a sewing machine. And this year, for my birthday, I convinced my husband to let me get something uh, pretty spectacular. And this is it. Um, so I recently... With the COVID-19 thing, um, I am a photographer, a portrait photographer by trade, and so it's pretty much left me unemployed. And uh, so I started messing with some other stuff, cleaning up projects, cleaning up boxes, cleaning up the house, and I ran across a bunch of fabric, so I started messing around, and uh, I got the bug. And it's been probably 20, 25 years since I've actually quilted. Actually, probably more like 25 to 30 years since I've actually quilted anything. Um, but this has been pretty amazing. And this little machine, boy, let me tell you, I am impressed. Um, so the, the foot pedal plugs in on the side here. Powers off to the back here. Power switches right here. She makes a lot of noise, uh, not a lot of noise. It's actually a lot quieter than my other machine, um, which I just gifted to my mother-in-law, who was hoping to get a sewing machine for Mother's Day, but everything she was looking at was on back order until at least August. So she got my machine, which works great for, you know, kind of beginner basic stuff. But this one has bells and whistles like, wow, I wish someone would have told me about this a long time ago. So anyway, welcome, and uh, let's get started. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna try something new today. Um, so we're actually gonna change out my quarter inch quilt guide uh, uh, piecing foot for my free motion foot. And um, before I get started on that, I lower my um, my foot lever down. And we're gonna we're gonna make sure that this is turned on. So let's see here. There we go. Um, your foot has to be down for you to put it in neutral, so your lights stay on. And um, if you hit the power button, nothing's gonna happen. You can see your start stop button is is red. And then uh, I grabbed this is this actually comes in your accessory pack. This is a, a really great little round screwdriver to undo this one over here because you don't have a lot of room over here um but we need to undo this all the way let's see if i can keep my hand out of the way there there we go and at this point i am actually raising my foot up there we go so we've slid this one out and now we get to put this one on so this is going to be fun i'm actually going to come in from the back side and there is, let's see if we can do this. Let me see if I can show you. There is a little indent right here. And on the side of the arm right here is the hole for the screw to go in. And that fits right there. So we match these up. I'm going to swing this around and get this started if I can with my big old fingers. And it is not the easiest one to get. There we go. To get it started. It's not hard. It's just you're in an awkward position. So I'm going to get it finger tight to start off with. And then I'm going to bring my little screwdriver in. And we're going to tighten it up. Now we don't want it. We want it to be tight so it doesn't come loose. But we don't want to just crank it down so we can't. So, so it bends the plastic and all that other good stuff. So our needle should be in the center position, which it is. And now we've got our free motion foot on and we're ready to go. Ready? And I'm going to take this out of neutral mode. And there we are. We've changed the foot. Okay. So um, I've got some funky, funky blue lines on here to kind of get me started. I'm going to actually remove this pin so it's not in my way. I may remove another one here. But I have a design. It's a dragonfly design. And I'm going to start at the head of it and see just what I can do here. Because I have not done this with this machine. So we'll just see what we can do. 
um, it stitches in place and then we kind of I'm going to actually slow it down a little bit so I'm not because I've got to be able to you know what I didn't do I didn't lower the feed dogs okay super super easy to do um, oh gosh I don't know if I can actually show you um, if you remove this the arm that sticks out on the back side of this is a switch and you can switch that over let me see if I can actually reach under there which I should be able to do and I'm gonna switch it over and see yep my feed dogs went down so that's probably gonna make it a lot easier for me to move things around so let's just see yep I'm not real good at this yet and this doesn't like to slide very easily on my table so oops <laughs> this is fun sort of not really all right let's see what we've got here and this comes in really super handy because i actually have my machine set up so that when i stop the needle drops down and that's for this reason in particular because if you're needing to readjust your fabric um, if you're needing to just anything when you take your foot off your little gas pedal down there um, it'll stop with the needle down so you don't have to constantly be cranking the needle down or making sure that it gets into that down position okay so yeah mine does not like the idea of sliding very well on this um, on my bed here so this is just a little too I don't know it's not sticky it just doesn't want to slide so um, I hear I'm understanding that you can get like a, a light silicone type spray that you can put on a cloth and test it out first and see how that works um, in some cases you don't want it to be super sticky and or super super slick super smooth and in other cases you you really wish it were and right now i really wish it were so um the other option is is to put on my gloves because the fabric is also really hard to move and you can see how i'm kind of bunching it up so i've got something to grab onto so let's just see what else i can do here It is by no means perfect. Oops, my pin got actually got stuck in the machine there. There you go. So we did one funky little dragonfly. And um, and these are uh, the fabric crayons, so it should wash out. Got my fingers crossed on that. I haven't tried it. But this is just a test piece for me because I haven't done any actual physical quilting with this machine. That is the reason I got it, and I wanted to see just how well it does. Um, and so far, it's pretty, the, the tension's pretty funky on the bottom side. So I want to test that a little bit and see what I can do there. I think I got to turn that around. So let me, let me do a little research, and I'll get back to you. Okay, so I learned a lot from that last little outing um since then i've actually changed my um my presser foot back to my quarter inch guided for piecing I've, i'm working on another quilt um i needed a, a little a little break to process everything that took place but what i found is um in the free motion when you set up the machine couldn't quite figure out what was going on because originally I was running into some really bizarre. This is the tension on the back. So the tension on the back is really super loose. You can see like it's almost a straight line with lots of big loopies. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? And I couldn't find anything at first. And then I finally did. I finally found that if the tension is like that where it's like super super loose on the back side then you turn your tension to a higher number and this that's this number right here so typically speaking this is the standard 
This is a standard stitch, the straight stitch. Um, and the tension is at four. And I actually changed it. Originally I changed it. I went up to five and it still wasn't quite right. It was a little bit better. You can see down in here, maybe. I don't know if you can actually see that, but right in here, it's not as bad as up here. But then I changed it to like 6.8, something 6.2 or 6.8. And then it started to make sense. And now, mind you, this is only the third time I've ever done any free motion anything. I find it incredibly fun. Um, but I also found that I pr really prefer kind of this more loose feel here than some of the tight stuff over here or or even up in... I, mean, I like the loop-de-loops, but I kept getting lost and then I'd cross over my own lines and oops. But, you know, you learn as you go. And so that was a really neat learning experience, something, something definitely to keep in mind. But the machine handled this beautifully. Um, and again, what I need to do, though, is I did put my... I have them. Where are they? Oh, here we go. I have my gloves, and I originally started without them. And I went and grabbed them, put these guys on, and these are the grabberoos, and they actually work really, really well. You know, instead of having to kind of grip up on your fabric, you can actually hold it out and you can really move things really nicely with these on. Without them, I was running into a problem with my hands wanting to slide across the fabric and stuff. So it was a really cool overall learning experience and I will definitely be doing more of this. I need more practice because I have a couple of quilts that I need to get done.